Back to this week in Louisiana politics. We're going to dedicate this segment to election integrity, uh, specifically election integrity here in Louisiana. This past legislative session, we saw about 11 bills make it to the governor's desk that promise election integrity. The person overseeing all elections throughout the state, Louisiana Secretary of State Nancy Landry, joins me now. Secretary Landry, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Fred. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you bet. So let's talk about these bills. Were you consulted on these these bills? We um, we helped usher these bills through, and so we you know they were part of our legislative package. We some of them we asked the legislators to handle them for us, and some of them the legislators filed them themselves and we adopted them as part of our package because of our support for them. And yeah, we want to drill down on a, a couple of those bills. I think we have time to do that. But I wanted to know just in your opinion, what's the one bill out of this, these 11 bills, what's the one bill that you think does the most for securing our elections? I think one that is particularly important to us is House Bill 114 by Les Farnham. This bill actually passed the legislature three times previously, and three times it was vetoed by the previous governor. And so um, for us to get this bill passed a fourth time, and we feel very confident that this time the um, Governor Landry will sign this bill into law, we were particularly excited about this piece of legislation. And this one will help us to have more accurate voter rolls. It will give us additional tools to clean our voter rolls and it's something that we've wanted for a while and so that that I think is the uh, main piece of legislation that we were um, we were thrilled to have passed this time. I think I remember reading about this one this is uh, 114 is this the one that allows you to just uh, go through and actually purge the rolls where you see that uh, people don't live at that address anymore or they've uh, passed on? Well, we don't purge the, the rolls, but um, the, what it does is it, uh, we have a tool we use every year called the annual canvas. And on the annual canvas, we do verify voters' addresses. But this gives us additional tools to verify even more voters. So it, it will allow us to verify people who have had no contact with our office for 10 or more years who have not voted in 10 or more years and who have um, not signed a petition in 10 or more years. And it'll allow us to verify them and, and send them a card and ask them if they still want to be registered to vote. And if not, they will be moved to what's called an inactive list. And once they've been on the inactive list for two federal election cycles, then their voter registration can be canceled. But if they're when they're on the inactive list, they can still come and vote anytime. And, and even if um, they're canceled, they can re-register at any time if they want to. So obviously that's the big concern is if we're, we're taking people off uh, the, the rolls, we, we don't want to impede someone's ability to, to register or to vote. Right, and this doesn't do that at all. So moving to the inactive rolls, you can still vote when you're on the inactive rolls. And we would encourage anybody who hasn't voted in 10 years to to wake up and decide to vote again and re-engage. We would love to see people do that, particularly this year in a, a, an important presidential election year. Right, okay, so let's drill down on uh, what is now called Act 291. It bans ranked choice voting in Louisiana. So first of all, what is ranked choice voting? So ranked choice voting is a convoluted and complicated voting system that requires the voter to rank the choices that they want so that they don't have a, a general election or a runoff election after the primary. And um, it is disliked by voters. It's confusing. And the states that have adopted it are even considering repealing it. And, and there are organizations going around the country trying to engage legislatures to adopt ranked choice voting. And we wanted to make sure that here in Louisiana that we um, ban it in our statutes so that it is not an option and that no local municipalities think that they have an option to to um, to do a ranked choice ballot. 
it's uh, something voters very much dislike, and we wanted to make sure that it was banned. For I would never do it as Secretary of State, but we wanted to make sure it was on the statute so the next Secretary of State wouldn't enact it either. Right, and I, I believe only three other states uh, have that system. And I saw this one actually debated in committee, and some of the opponents of, of the bill, I think, kind of pointed to the situation where they, you know, they said this was a, a solution looking for a problem. You don't see it that way? I don't see it that way because we've had local municipalities um, try to enact different kinds of voting systems, even though they don't have the authority to do that. Um, there have been attempts in the past, and we just wanted to make sure that it was very clear in the law that this is not something our voters want, and it's not something that, that you know, will be allowed in Louisiana. So this bill by uh, Josh Carlson promised to crack down on absentee ballot harvesting. Was that an issue before? So uh, um, ballot harvesting has been banned in Louisiana for several years. We're very proud of our anti-ballot harvesting laws. We have some of the best in the nation. And so what um, Representative Carlson's bill does is it closes a loophole that we found in the law where um, right now only a family member can deliver more than one ballot to the registrar of voters, more than one absentee ballot. And we found that some um, people were bypassing the law and violating the spirit of the law by gathering ballots, ballot harvesting, and then dropping them in a post office blue box, which is um, violating the spirit of the anti-ballot harvesting law. And so we wanted to also outlaw that practice and make sure that that is not gonna allow people to bypass our anti-ballot harvesting laws. And then I wanted to ask you about uh, HB uh, 581. It requires penalties uh, for witnessing more than one absentee ballot of a non-family member. Uh, this is addressing the issue of helping someone fill out a ballot. Is that correct? So witnessing more than one um, absentee ballot is already a prohibition in the law. What um, House Bill 581 by Representative Thomas does is it requires that they, um, a witness provide the address so that we can determine whether they're uh, witnessing more than one ballot. Because we had a problem with people with very common names witnessing ballots and we couldn't tell if it was the same person witnessing more than one ballot or not. So this just requires them to provide additional information so that we can make a determination if they violated the um, prohibition and also it requires that a witness be 18 years of age because previously there was no age limit and an eight-year-old could have witnessed a ballot and we feel like it, if the um, if someone's witnessing some a document that important that's witnessing someone's vote in an election it needs to be someone who is the age of majority all right that's all the time we have Louisiana Secretary of State Nancy Landry thanks for coming on appreciate it Thank you, Fred. Thanks for having me. Remember to go out and get registered and vote in the um, important presidential election this year. Absolutely. Good advice. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.